Welcome to SVG TV News for Monday, April 8th, 2024. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. A massive crowd turned up at the tarmac of the decommissioned E.T. Joshua Airport in Arnesville on Sunday night for the ruling Unity Labour Party's 23rd anniversary celebration in governance here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. After cabinet ministers deliver greetings to the thousands in attendance, party lead and Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, who successfully led the ULP to five consecutive election victories, listed the many reasons why Vincentian should give his party another term in office. It's six, but also no to the chance that it could go differently. The good governance can be reversed. That's what they tell you. But I will say this to you. History has shown that empires have fallen. The Roman Empire lasted hundreds of years. Very strong, very large, it fell. The Persian Empire fell. The British Empire declined. For this progress which we have, for it to be further consolidated, you have to give the Unity Labour Party a sixth term. And after that, you have to assess to give them more again. In 2001, you bought into the vision. And you have seen the immense progress and the upliftment that the ordinary man and woman in this country that you have had. Dr. Gonzalez reiterated his party's position on the Citizenship by Investment program, which he said they will never introduce. He also highlighted improved Men's made in education and structural developments. The ULP leader told supporters that saying in solidarity is key to winning his sixth term in office at the next general elections, constitutionally due in 2025. You hear my message to you tonight. My message to you tonight is to stay together in solidarity with labor. I want to tell you, apart from our philosophy, our policies, our programs. We have an organization called the Unity Labor Party, which is not made up of people who are involved in transactional relationships. We share a philosophy. We share a policy. We share a program. You never see confusion inside of the Unity Labor Party. You see the confusion on the other side. And I want you to watch the stability that we have brought to this country. The ULP leader further highlighted the consistency in staying united, which he said has helped steer his party on a positive path. We are in office now for 23 years. And a record has been set. Nobody in our cabinet has ever been fired. Nobody in our cabinet has ever resigned. We have remained stable and progressive and forward-looking and democratic and transparent. The challenges which we have had within our first year, 9-11 in September, which affected us adversely. Tropical Storm Lily in 2002. And then every single year, almost, we have a storm alternating with droughts. Then 2008 until 2011, we had the global economic downturn, the worst the country has ever seen, the world has ever seen. And then storms in 2011, 2012, 2013. We had COVID, we had the volcanic eruptions, we had Hurricane Elsa, we had the war in Ukraine affecting us with supply chain issues and increasing prices. And through all of those things, in order to take the small boat safely through the rough waters, 
And that is what we have done over the last 23 years. And on the radio today, leader of the opposition New Democratic Party, Dr. Godwin Friday, said while his party supports the amendments to the Criminal Code and Firearms Act, which were approved by Parliament last Thursday, he said the ULP administration has failed the country in fighting crime. And in their function there the other day, um, yesterday, Prime Minister talked for I don't know how long, didn't mention crime once. And it tells you now what, how that ranks within his property his priorities. Of course, he would mention my name and he would mention the NDP, that's his obsession. But the matter of crime, the things that matter most to people, doesn't get mentioned. So, Colin, they have, they know that the people throughout this country have done their assessment now of the performance of the government. They gave them time. They gave them time. The people of this country, and I, I was telling this to my colleague in St. Lucia, I said the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, they're very patient. You know? They give the party and government time to say, show us what you can do. And they've been more than patient with this present administration. But the reckoning has come. And they have found them wanting, seriously so, on the matter of crime, on the matter of gun violence. In 2022-2023, there were a total of 96 homicides in those two years. Both of them were record-breaking years. 71 of those, Colin were gun deaths, people shot to death. We don't make guns in St. Vincent. How are they getting in? The government hasn't said how they're going to deal with that. They're always talking in generalities without saying or doing what it is they promised to do. They came into government so many years ago saying that they'll be tough on crime and the causes of crime. And crime has been tough on them, where they now seem to have surrendered. You know, as some people now in the, in the public, they will tell you, well, we will always have crime. That is a surrender. And to lead people around that path to think that this is normal and this is acceptable is wrong because it will create a society at some point where we are getting there now, where you feel unsafe, you can't go out of your home, you can't go and participate in the things that you enjoy, you have no real interest in doing so because you feel afraid. What kind of a society is that? The opposition leader said that the time has come uh, for a new Minister of National Security who he said will give priority to the crime issues which are plaguing the country. It sends a signal not just to our own people who are the most important in this entire equation, but not just to them alone, but to the international community to say that we are serious about dealing with this terrible problem. And we don't want to be ranked a second in the region, fourth in the world for homicides, for murders. That should not be where we lead in anything in this region or in the world. We need to reverse that, and it can be done. You don't just throw up your hands and say, well, I'm not going to talk about it, or encourage people to think that this is inevitable. It doesn't matter who comes into office, that you will still have this problem. We're not saying you're not going to have crime, but in a free democratic society, there is a limit to which you would say okay, in, a, in a society that we, we have, we don't want any crime at all, but there's a limit that you will say, it's tolerable, we can live the life that we choose to live in this country. The goal has to be to get it to zero. But we know that that is unrealistic. But at least to get it to the levels where you don't have increasingly every year the number going up, you're having more and more horrendous types of crime taking place. And the ones that don't get the coverage, you know, the break-ins, the burglaries in homes, in places that you wouldn't normally expect those things to happen. The theft of people's animals and, and, and food crops that is plaguing and destroying the agricultural sector and we have pledged to deal with. Pray larceny, completely out of hand. Every farmer you talk to will tell you they have had animals stolen, they have a crop stolen and they don't know what to do about it anymore because they are provoked and severely provoked but they know that they can't deal with this on their own that they need the police, the authorities, the law to step in. And it's time that the police respond to it with the seriousness that it is a Dr. Friday said the NDP is offering a better alternative to the present government, noting that the people of the country deserves better. We have to talk about the things that matter to people, Colin. And this present government, they just seem to be, they want a party and they want to just tell people that, um, you know, whatever they are feeling, that somehow it's a figment of their imagination, that poverty is not real, that unemployment. They should talk about the 41% of unemployment among young people. Talk about the 20, 25 percent unemployment in the country overall. Talk about the rising poverty in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Talk about the hardship people have making ends meet, the cost of living crisis that is crushing 
um, the life out of people. Talk about the lack of medicines and bandages in the hospital. Talk about the terrible roads that we have throughout this country, the potholes that have grown into swimming pools. You know, this is something that really the, the country will have to hold them accountable for. You know, we showed some pictures the other day, videos of the hard courts around the country. Mm -hmm. And you see the state, the terrible, terrible state. Things that you could fix so easily, but they just don't give a damn. Because people, they feel they could just come at the end and the election time and throw some big promises of tunnel on the King Garden and city in Arnesville, all that crap that they're talking, and feel that people are going to always say, okay, give them a chance again. Well, news for them. The people of this country have decided enough is enough and that they are going to bring a change. We are offering a better alternative to the present government. We are offering a better alternative to the people, one that focuses on what the people needs are to try to meet those needs for jobs, for better paying jobs, for health care that they can trust, for better infrastructure that respects them when they purchase a vehicle, that they don't have to be dodging potholes and fixing their, 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 their tires and their rims and their shocks, their suspension every week and month, well before the time that they're supposed to do so, were it not for the terrible conditions of our roads. That is disrespecting people. That is what they will be held accountable for. And on the radio on Sunday morning, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez announced that they had to stop two big flights, one from Nigeria with 337 passengers with not many Nigerians and another from Dubai with 320 passengers passing through Morocco and onward to the Agal International Airport. Prime Minister Gonzalez said on a review of all the facts and circumstances, the passengers were not a bona fide tourist and were seeking to use SVG as a transit point as they have tried with other places in the region before. But they're getting no, they're, they're, they're getting absolutely no um, space from the, 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 the government in, 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 in that regard. And I remind everybody who is who's engaged in on locally on the ground, even with people who may think they're handling innocently, that the, the Trafficking in Persons Act and the entire criminal code, which connects with the trafficking in persons, it's an act which will mean an automatic jail term. Mm. So, it's, I, I just want to say that it is, and I've, we've dealt with the matter firmly. Mm -hmm. The bulk of the people who are coming are from Bangladesh, from Nepal, from Cameroons, significant number of Indians too, and people from Sri Lanka. Whoa. And uh, there are also requests for feeder companies in respect of the, the, the entity coming out of Dubai by way of Morocco. And those three entities are regional carriers. And it's a regional, regional in, in the sense of Latin America. All of those have been refused permission, all of those. But the authorities, um, we, we, we have the, the names of the individuals concerned we have the the nationality the, the birth the when the when the passports were, were issued they were issued very recently <laughs> there are many things which can give you an indication but most of them were issued fairly recently to give you an indication um what what may be an intention they, they. Mm -hmm. noting that svg will not be used as a transit point for migrants the prime minister noted that last wednesday they impose visa restrictions on several nations they may want to they, clearly that they want to come here in theory to leave here to hang around for a week and go to other places in latin america and central america but we are not going to be allowing any of that. We, on Wednesday, we imposed 
visa restrictions. We already have visa restrictions on Nigerians. We impose visa restrictions on Cameroonians, Nepalese, people from passport holders of Bangladesh. The Indian and High Commissioner is going to be here. In fact, he's here this weekend because we're doing something next week. And I'm going to speak to him about this. And uh, they were talking of moving people in this week coming. Hmm. Um, but there's been a denial for them to land in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Mr. Prime Minister, um, these are all Commonwealth countries that yes. you just made reference to. Yes. And except, it, except, it, except Bulgaria. Yeah. Um, it begs the question why would we not um, allow flights originated from these countries to land? Well, these are charters. Charter, okay. These are, these are charters which want to use St. Vincent and the Grenadines as a transit okay. to go elsewhere. And one cannot be sure, given what has happened in some other countries, that having landed here, if they don't transit out of here, you're stuck with persons who you would not normally allow to come to stay for any prolonged period of time. It's a different thing if somebody buys a ticket on an airline, okay. a regular airline coming in. Or we have we have relations with the government of Nigeria, with, 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 with Dubai and with, um, with Morocco, and we would welcome tourism, but it, it would be done through a structured means and you would have the governments of those countries saying, well, this is how we are cooperating on, 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 on tourism. The Prime Minister said given that the people who were down to arrive here on the chartered flight from Dubai but are not from the United Emirates, certain questions arise in reference to SVG's law in relation to human trafficking. I, I contacted a gentleman who owns a company which does handling for airlines and I outlined to him um, the dangers inherent in this and um, he said, well, listen, I'm not... I'm not going to operate with them anymore. And the second company, which is supposed to do the, the feeder airlines, they had told the people that they're not interested in doing any work like this because according to the lady who I spoke to, said to me, their business recognized that there was something fishy about it. That's the word you just used. Um, she, may, she may have a larger meaning behind fishy. I had a very good conversation with her. I'm, 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 I'm careful in all the language which I'm using, as you notice. Um, a, a charter company by where people, tourists coming out of, of Morocco. There's no tourists here coming out of Morocco, you know. None coming out of Dubai either. And very few actually on the, on the Nigerian flight coming out of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we have taken a clear position on this. In relation to Bulgaria, <clears throat> I've informed by telephone conversation the, to the ambassador to the European Union, because it's easier to have gotten her than to get somebody from the Bulgarian mission, and outlined that although um, Bulgaria is a member of the European Union, and Bulgaria has recently joined the Schengen mm -hmm. um, visa zone, March 31st, so they have just, I, I wanted to indicate to, to, to the European Union that though we are imposing restrictions, visa restrictions on a member of the European Union, that we are doing it for the transitory purpose of persons who may be flying these, this plane for Bulgarian origin, Bulgarian um, nationality, to, um, to control our airspace and our territory. We want it to be, we want it to be something which is consistent. Mm -hmm. The police here are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of two men from Park Hill in the North Central Windward constituency. The grim discovery of the two charred or burnt bodies on some grass at the back of a house was made just before midday today. The deceased men have been identified as Marvin Barker and Talford Smart. SOG TV News will bring you more information on this as further information comes to hand. 
now we hear that World Health Day was observed on Sunday, April 7, 2024, under the team My Health, My Right, with millions of people's rights to health being threatened. More and more globally, the 2024 team seeks to champion the right of everyone everywhere to have access to quality health services, education and information, as well as safe drinking water, clean air, good nutrition, quality housing, decent working and environmental conditions, freedom from discrimination. In a brief address to Mac World Health Day 2024, SOG's Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment, Sinclair Jimmy Prince, said the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment continues to make notable strides to raise the standard of health care provided to citizens. Minister Prince, however, urged members of the public to prioritize their health and make use of the resources that are available across the country. Health services more accessible, increased public awareness, health education, and most importantly, affordable quality services within our public system. St. Vincent and the Grenadines has one of the most subsidized public health services within the OECS, and this has significantly reduced the direct out-of-pocket spending for Vincentians. As the Ministry of Health and the government as a whole continue our efforts from prevention to treatment, we urge you to make your health a priority and utilize the services available. Our hospitals, polyclinics and health centers are well within reach throughout the country. Make use of them. Remember, your health is your responsibility. Your health is your right. For the past 15 months, the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force has received reports in 20. 217 children between the age of 1 and 15 were victims of crime. This is according to Assistant Commissioner of Police in Charge of Crime, Trevor Bailey, who was addressing the launch of activities for Child's Month 2024 last Thursday. Crimes that include murder, rape, unlawful sexual intercourse, indecent assault, the reports are not limited to our girls, but our boys as well. As responsible ad adults, as parents, we are to have conversation with our children. We need to have, make them aware of the dangers that are out there. You know, I as part of a meeting yesterday and whilst I'm not prepared to speak on it yet an issue was raised that is very disturbing for the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and most of our youths we, we're not quite yet ready to, to speak to that issue a CDPS she glanced at me I nodded her head she's fully aware as to what I'm saying but real danger look on the horizon for our kids. And we, we, whilst we want to allow our children to go out and socialize, we must always be cognizant that real dangers lurk at the outside. And we must have frank conversation with our kids. Where they go and socialize and who they socialize with is very important. And the things that they do when they're on the outside is very important. So we must always be constantly reminding of our kids, our children to walk the straight and narrow road. The Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force stand ready and shoulder the responsibility alongside the Ministry of Mobilization and all the other stakeholders in ensuring that our nation's most valuable resource, our children, are protected. As part of the activities for Child's Month 2024, Minister of National Mobilization Dr. Rondo Brusa said there will be a child abuse awareness campaign hosted by the Child Division in the Ministry of National Mobilization, targeting all schools across SVG. So I know school is out for now, but as soon as school is back in session, you're going to see folks from the Child, of the child Division come into your school as we raise the awareness and inform teachers, students, about child abuse and how we can prevent such acts from happening. Let me say that during this year, there are two cases that really came across very touching. Um, one was the, the one-year-old child from, from Rose Hall, Rose Hall, um, very sad story and a child lost a life 
and I am urging anyone, please, we need to continue to support that family. We need to continue to help. Yes, the government will do its part, but it takes more than the government in some time in these matters. Um, and recently, 17-year-old Kimisha Haynes, who, who lost her, her life in tragic circumstances, and I extend my sincere condolences and sympathies to the family, and I'm urging for those of you who have any information concerning the perpetrator or the offender or offenders in this regard to please speak to anyone um, within the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force. Um, it is really sad that we have to be seeing some of our young people um, meeting their demise in such tragic circumstances. In relation to the Atteris Home for Boys and Girls, which is expected to be in place by March 31st, Minister Bruce has said there were a few challenges. However, they are working steadfastly to get it done. We have to be very transparent with it. Um, as it relates to acquiring a property, there are a few challenges that we are experiencing, but it is still on the front burner because I want, before this year is finished, we have a safe and secure space for our young people who are at risk, those who are being abused, neglected, and those who are in conflict with the law and needs a space um, where we can do some form of rehabilitation and reconnect them with our society. My aim as a minister, and my, my ministry's aim, is for these little precious jewels to grow up with stories that are touching, heartwarming, and would reflect a typical story of any of our children that has not been abused. So we have work to do. I will urge all Vincentians to observe this month of activities. We have to treat this with some form of seriousness. We have to treat this with some form of care and love. And this should be the same care and love that we give to our little ones. Let us renew our commitment to work together. It is not only Minister Brewster, the PS, the Director of, of Child. We are all involved in the raising of our children here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. 21 teenagers are participating in a one-week character building program, which started today at the Sunset Shows Hotel. Organizer of the Blossom Blocks Easter Camp, Dr. Josel Miller of Villa Value Experience anticipates that the program will help the teenagers overall development as it prepares them for life. A lot of the times we hear a lot of things being done around the little ones, but the teenage years are sometimes overlooked. And the teenage years, by research, has proven to be the most turbulent times because a lot of the teens are now trying to figure out themselves. And we want to be able to instill proper principles, values, make them understand the importance of their belief systems because when you have these things um, as part of your integrity or your who you are as an individual it helps with your decision making and how your life flows we are going to have um, different persons coming in to speak to very important issues surrounding our teens especially things like um, nutrition sexual health aggression bullying we are also going to be having activities like painting poetry writing because we want a persons to channel their emotions and so on in positive ways to help them cope with some of the different things that might be affecting them. This is the first Easter camp organized by Value Experience and as part of its corporate social responsibility, the Bank of SVG is supporting the program. I am actually representing the bank in a different capacity. Um, we are happy with this partnership with Blossom Blocks um, Camp today, which is really supporting the youths. And one of our um, main pillars with regard to how we support our community is the growth and development of our youths. And we are happy to partner with Blossom Blocks today and just to give our youth some support. So if Father Four said the program is suited for his teenage daughter and welcomes such an initiative that also involves boys. We thought it will be ideal for our daughter to attend. Um, the whole idea of character building, you know, because at this stage of the children's lives, um, in their early teens, is the period of time when they become more influenced by peers. So it's 
our view to expose them to more positive influences. And when they are exposed to more positive influences, that will have a greater impact on their lives. So um, that's exactly why we um, have her here. And um, we encourage her this morning to participate, pay attention, um, you know, soak up the whole experience. So she's going to be here for the entire week. And we just want for her to have fun. We want for all the children to have fun. And um, when I came in, I noticed, well, initially, I thought it was just a session for girls. Um, but when I came in, um, I was pleased to see that boys are present also, because we also need to have our boys influence positively. And 14 motor vehicle accidents were recorded by the traffic department of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force over the weekend period. On the radio today, Corporal Phillips King said this is the highest number reported for a single weekend for the year thus far. Six of those were in the out district. You know, from, we have one from Stubbs, uh, one from the Mesopotamia Valley, one from Leyu, one from the Connery district, one from the Barley district, one from Kittles district, and the eight others were in the Kingston district. And notably, one in the Kingston district uh, involved uh, injuries. That is where a female a pedestrian, she would have sustained uh, serious injuries to her right leg. She was taken to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital and she has been treated for that injury she would have uh, sustained. So there we have it for the weekend period, 14 reported accidents.